Um, last week, I discovered that BBTV, Broadband TV, they, over the course of the last two years, have, in my opinion, stolen $620,000 from us. And when we discovered it, I wrote them a, a letter inquiring, like a patient and nice letter inquiring. Be like, hey, I'm assuming this is an honest mistake. Let's figure it out. And then on Friday after the show, they called us to tell us that they're not paying us back. And basically what I interpreted as a giant middle finger and telling me to get bent. Tough shit. They said, lol, we got you, idiot. But they didn't, actually. The contract is clear, and their intentions are clear. Also, I do want to say, straight up off the bat, everything I'm saying is in my opinion. Do not send hate or harassment to any employee of BBTV, anyone associated. This is between me and them and our attorneys. I'm going to start from the top. I mean, ultimately, an MCN is a multi-channel network. That's what BBTV is. Going back, you know, five years ago plus, MCNs were super important. It was one of my main criticisms of YouTube is that they gave these MCNs, which were predatory and pointless, way too much power. For example, there was monetization tools that were only accessible through MCNs. At one point, that was, correct me if I'm wrong, the way to get paid from making YouTube videos. Like you had to have one to get monetized. I think you're right. I totally forgot that. You couldn't even get paid unless you were part of an MCN. Mm -hmm. And they forced you into these incredible toxic predatory relationships where we were kids. We don't know anything about doing legal shit. We're just YouTubers, you know what I mean? And so they would they would do like these crazy splits like 60 40 for years at a, at a at an end and then they would they wouldn't let you out. So we were all kind of forced into these predatory relationships with MCNs. Like, why? And they were fucking everybody over. And their services became... At first, they were like a management company. And they could guarantee certain, like, revenue splits and stuff. And it made sense to go with them. But quickly, quickly after, it turned into them just making all these false promises. Like, that you'll get better rates with us. That we can help you go viral. And all this shit that's obviously false. What happened in my case is we made our AdSense account in Israel. And when we moved to America, you can't change your AdSense address. You have to cancel the AdSense and make a new one. And to do that would drop my channel out of monetization. And it can take like two weeks to get the new AdSense account approved. So the only way for me to actually get paid was to be a member of a network because they send the money to BBTV and then to me. And so I knew that leaving broadband TV would be this really horrible mess for me where everything would be demonetized, all the memberships would be paused, and I potentially have to wait like two weeks with no monetization. Now, luckily, I did it this week and I finally had to do it. It got approved really fast. So I'm thankful. I think someone at YouTube probably was on top of it to expedite that. So it was only down for like a day or half a day. So now we're on our own AdSense thing and I can finally monetize. But before, I didn't want to deal with this potential potentiality of being demonetized across the board on all of our channels for two weeks. So I stayed with them as a matter of convenience, you know. And when we made this agreement with them, it was clear, crystal clear. It was 100% monetization from YouTube to me. And 75% of whatever, if they bring me an ad, like, I don't know, if they bring me, they're like, promote this video game in your in your show, like a sponsorship, you mm -hmm. know, like we do on the podcast, then they get a cut, which makes sense. Yeah, if you guys bring me shit, sure, you can have a cut of that, makes sense. In the five and a half years that I worked for you, it's a handful of times they've gotten us Maybe ads. two. Over the course of the years, it may have been more, it may have been like five, something like that. It was never I mean, the expectation like, anyway. No. It was like, I don't care. It was a rare exception when we got an email from them. So. And like, let's be real, they were doing that to make money. My actual agency that brings us the ads regularly, who I love and trust, takes less cut than that. Right. I just don't care about what BBTV is doing. They know, I know, that I'm only there for convenience so I can get paid and they have no tangible value to a channel like mine, or any channel, in my opinion. And so, over the years, we've stayed with them, and in 2018, the membership product was launched by YouTube. Now, we signed our contract in 2017, so of course it wouldn't have been carved out. 
it didn't exist at the time. And because we agreed in 2017 that all YouTube, Google revenue, 100% would be mine, then I would assume, of course, that would be mine too. You would also assume that if they were going to be taking 30% of this new massive revenue stream, because we've been, been, our fans have been extremely gracious to support us on the membership, and we've made an effort to build a robust community there, that they would at least say something. That it would be a conversation, that it would be an authorization, that it would be a notification. What they did is silently skim 30% going back as far as we can record. And, uh, you know, it started off as a small amount and it's grown and grown and grown. Now, the reason that this was even possible is because we had an accountant who was supposed to cross check all the money and the invoice they sent us every month with the payment we received. I used to do that before we had a head of finance. It's a tedious task, you know, as a business owner, as someone who's trying to build my business and do lots of other stuff, you got to outsource that stuff. So I trusted her to be doing that. We fired her three months ago and we found out she hadn't been doing that, which is why this has been going on for so long. And we just noticed it. That's kind of what happened is I knew she was gone. So I was like, well, somebody needs to make sure these payments are right while our new person gets acclimated. So I went in there and I was like, yo, these are like significantly off. When I noticed that it was way off, first I, I wrote to my representative over at BBTV and I was like, can you tell me what's going on here? Meanwhile, I went to our new finance person and start. I said, hey, I'm noting this discrepancy. Can you look back and tell me, is this something that's been happening every month? She ran a report, sent it to me. And realized, you know, and told, showed me the amount that they've been taking every month. And it had been going on continually since we have records to show. And the total for that was, you know, $619,000 that they had taken from us. And probably they had taken more because the records that they provided before that were not thorough enough to even know. They didn't even categorize the money they were taking in that way. And what's especially fucked up is that when I started with them in 2018, I checked every month and it was on every month. It had always been on. Nobody had ever skimmed like this. Mm -hmm. And so I had no reason not to trust them that they would be doing this. You know what I mean? It was this unfortunate situation where we had this really horrible finance person who screwed us over. But ultimately, as much as it is my responsibility, I'm not going to take responsibility for someone stealing from me. Like you expect your business partners not to be fucking thieves. If you've got a big ass vault with money and you're inviting your friends and family over, if somebody goes and, op and opens the vault because it's not locked and skims some money, sure, you should have locked it, but like ultimately it's their fault that you trusted them. They came into your house and stole your shit. So once I realized that this was a systemic thing going back two years and it was this significant amount of money, I f started to panic a little bit and I wrote them this fat email that was very polite, very direct. I gave them the, the benefit of the doubt to assume it was an honest mistake. And then they ghosted me for three days. And that's when I was like, this is not going to fucking, Here we go. Th this isn't it. So I found out everyone's email. I found out the CEO's email, the officer's email, whatever. I put it all in there because I was like, this is serious. And I want to make sure that we're on the same page before this escalates. <laughs> so here's the email that I wrote them on, uh, I think it was Tuesday evening of last week. Dear BBTV officers, you can play the music, Zach. I hope this email finds you well. I am writing today to address a pressing matter that has come to my attention, which requires immediate action on your end. Upon reviewing our financial records, I have discovered a, signif a significant discrepancy in sponsorship revenue that has been remitted to the Street Podcast. It appears that Broadband TV has been withholding 30% of the sponsorship money going back as far as December 2020, possibly even earlier. The amount withheld from us, as far as our records allow us to track, is $619,101.06. As you are well aware, our agreement with Broadband TV, which was established in 2017, clearly states that 100% of all revenue would go to the H3 podcast. The only exception to this would be if Broadband TV directly bought us a third-party sponsorship, in which case your company would receive a cut of that specific revenue. It's become apparent that this, is, that this understanding has not been respected, and I am deeply concerned about the implications of this breach in our agreement. I am currently assuming that this discrepancy is the result of an honest mistake, and that we will not need to escalate the situation any further. However, I must stress the urgency and gravity of this matter. It is paramount importance that we resolve the issue quickly and amicably. So I kindly request a detailed plan of action from you on how Broadband TV intends to rectify the situation. 
including the reimbursement of the entire amount withheld from us, and any other discrepancies that may be discovered. I expect to receive this plan of action by end of the work week, Friday. So I gave them till Friday to respond. I felt that I was being gracious, I was giving them the benefit of the doubt, and I was giving them a whole week to make a informed, well-reasoned response. Failure to do so will leave me no choice but to consider alternative courses of action. I clearly state that I wanted to, you know, end this amicably. I didn't want to turn this into anything bigger than it needed to be. I didn't want to get into another lawsuit, into another battle. I appreciate your prompt matter to this attention. I have faith that we can reach an agreeable solution. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me directly should you have any other uh, additional information. I attached our contract as well as the financial report we put together of the amount of money they were taking from us every month. So I send them this letter, which I think was, you know, stern, but but polite and gracious. And I started to stress, like I said, because three days had passed and it was like crickets. Not even my representative, who's usually pretty quick to get back to me, responded. So I'm like, okay, these guys are talking to lawyers. There's like a scene probably going on back there. They're trying to figure out what to do. But I still held hope in my heart that they would be like, this is just a misunderstanding. I didn't imagine at the time that this was some systemic play on their end because they've been doing this to other people we found out now. I didn't understand the magnitude of the situation. I hoped that it wouldn't be like that. So I wrote my representative a few days later when I hadn't heard from them because I was getting nervous. I was like, is this really going to go down like this? So I just wrote him. I was like, so what's going on? Haven't heard from anyone. Is their intent really to ignore me? I'm still a member in your network. Like you're still taking my money. You can give me a response. He said, leadership is working on sending something out to you directly. Now, when they say leadership, what do you, who do you think? Who do you imagine leadership includes? I mean, I don't know the scale of this company, how many people work there, but for that amount of money, I have to imagine that probably got flagged pretty All far. All the way to the top. Pretty far. Up. There ain't no way the CEO wasn't privy to all this shit. Yeah. Sharzad Rafati. And this girl, this woman really, you know, she accomplished something really amazing in building this network. But at the end of the day, she, I think she knows what she's doing with this business. And she's really, she's going on all these PR tours, very much a public figure about, uh, she's like meeting with Justin Trudeau. She's in all these magazines about being like top tech people in Canada. She's in an article titled why ethical business transactions is good for business. I'm like, you're just stealing from me. Tone it down. It's just all a facade. So anyway, he wrote me this. He said, apologies for not following up here. Wanted to let the internal discussion happen before giving you any potential updates would amount to more info on the way soon. So that actually made me feel hopeful. He's like, okay, leadership's working on it. And he says, we're just triple checking everything, which I thought meant they were like maybe checking the amount. But actually what it meant is they were pouring over the contract, trying to calculate how they could justify stealing my money. I responded, thanks for the update, really appreciate it. The radio silence was making me nervous. Okay, then he responded, are you free to call with our SVP to go over directly? And then we uh, arranged for a time to call Friday after our show. So after this call, I immediately realized, okay, I've been putting off this thing. I'm going to get demonetized for two weeks potentially, but I, I, I have to leave. Like, I don't have a fucking choice. And I was on the phone with people from YouTube. They're trying to figure out the best and most painless way to do this. I had to make a new AdSense located in the United States. So I cancel my AdSense account and I make a new one. And then that's when everyone got notified that the memberships were paused. So w this channel was completely demonetized. The memberships were paused for like a day. And I'm so grateful that I, I don't know if my dude was able to expedite it. And that's what happened because like in the middle of the night, it, it started working again. So shout out to them. Uh, that's awesome. So I only was like unmonetized for a day. And then, so that's when everyone started to get confused and worried and genuinely did not expect to turn this into like a big viral thing. I made this video to tell everybody on the subreddit and on Twitter and stuff and Discord were like, what happened? They deserve to know. I mean, this is their money. So I posted this video, BBTV stole $620,000 on my, you know, my dumb, stupid, whatever channel. And this was like a really dry, long video. I did not expect it, this to actually become a thing at all. I really didn't. What I said in this is a lot of what we've already talked about. So I made that video. It went pretty big on Reddit. That evening, after I put out the video, I get their first uh, letter from their attorney. And this is where I, the fun really begins. See, they don't think that I'm going to share this. But I am. Like, I, I don't care. They go private and confidential. Fuck that. I don't agree. 
My life's an open book. It's not my fucking problem. Attention, Ethan Klein. Dear Mr. Klein, further to your meeting with our team on Friday, we have been assessing your comments with our legal and operational teams. While we have been doing this, we have been made aware of your videos and Twitter posts. We believe that these are extremely unhelpful. To who? Exactly. <laughs> unhelpful. Yeah, I'm crazy like that. I'm being super unhelpful. And we also believe they contain defamatory content. I was like, okay. You guys want to do that? You guys want to be like posture in that way? I'm not a fucking kid. I know what defamation is. And so then this is where they start lying to me and manipulating what happened. They says, and I'm, this is why I'm so glad we recorded the call. They says, we would like to investigate your concerns fully, but we need time to do this thoroughly. And without the distraction and the unhelpful backdrop, they had a week. I notified them, as I showed you in the beginning, politely. I came to them, willing to uh, accept that it was an honest mistake. And when they got on the phone with me and spit in my face and told me they're keeping the money, now it's like, well, you didn't give us the time. No, you had the time and you made your fucking choice. Please remove the videos and tweets posted yesterday and today and refrain from further comment until we have been able to discuss this with you and your counsel. Or what? What are you going to do about it? Please remove the post and stop talking about it. Or what? I'm here live. I couldn't even, you couldn't even erase this if you tried. What the fuck are you going to do about it? I'm unhelpful as shit. <laughs> My middle fucking name. That's right. I'm right here. Stop me. What the fuck are you going to do about it? We are working to give you a considered and detailed response by Wednesday of next week. Again, delay, 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 kick the guy. I told you guys about this fucking, the, this week early gave you the entire week. And now you need to Wednesday to give a detailed response after you spit in my face? Fuck no. Man, I'm not going to sit around like a dumbass while you guys embezzle my money, in my opinion. As you guys f prepare the paperwork for bankruptcy. I'm going to sit, in my opinion, this speculation. I'm just gonna sit around and let you steal my money. Fuck you. Stop me. Please, I'm begging you, stop me. In the meantime, if you have legal counsel involved in this matter, please provide them with a copy of this letter and have them get in touch with me as soon as possible. Nah, fuck you. Here's the thing. <laughs> They're in Canada, so I need to find a Canadian attorney. The one that my main lawyer suggested actually has a conflict, so he can't, he can't represent us. So now I have to find a Canadian attorney. But this is just me and you, lady. I'm freeballing. It's just me and you. I bet you're used to talking to attorneys who are very cordial and they're very careful and... Yeah, I don't know. It's just me. And I'm fucking crazy. Here's my response. This is the first of two email exchanges we had. I said, Dear, whatever her name is, I must find a Canadian attorney. I have a good reference I can follow up on Monday. If you would like me to erase my post, you can provide me the full amount owed and unleak me from the network. Not because my posts aren't true, but because I'd rather be done with this sooner than later. I'm not going to remove it on some vague promise to get back to me on Wednesday. I believe everything I've said to be true and accurate, and when appropriate, clearly labeled as opinion. In terms of being defamatory, this is something for a judge or jury to decide. But, but as I'm sure you know, truth is the best defense to defamation. And that is certainly on my side. Sorry y'all gotta face consequences for being shady pieces of shit. They get so up in arms, they're like, oh. No, sir. No, don't talk about us. They're like a vampire with light on them. Ah, uh, no. Fighting defamation cases is practically a sport for me at this point. Nothing excites me like an opportunity to strengthen our First Amendment rights or free speech as guaranteed in your fair Canadian charter. Additionally, it's worth mentioning that I plan to talk extensively about this on Monday's show, including the recording of the call with your lovely representative, this letter as well. So if it is your intention to remedy this, please let me know by end of day tomorrow, or at least let me know by Monday, 12 p.m. PST. So that was mine. I made my intentions very clear. I'm like, listen, this is all going up. They sent me another legal letter that evening. By the way, both of these she sent to me at like 10.30 p.m. I was like, oh yeah, that sounds like they're having a really fun time right now. On the weekend, on Easter. On Easter weekend. She sent this to me on Easter weekend at 10.30 p.m. So as this one says, uh, hi, Ethan, I realize you will be seeking counsel tomorrow. Given the urgency and the absence, I am sending this note to you. Well, thank you. Who else would you send it to? I'm right here with you. The stance. It is very dis it's very disappointing to see that after working together for five years, you have decided to breach YouTube's community guidelines. So she's threatening to 
narc on me to YouTube for some vague, like, she's, she's threatening to give me a strike. You think I'm dumb? They continue to treat me like an idiot. After five years of working together, you decided to breach YouTube's community guidelines, our content provider agreement, and defame and harass our company and our CEO. When you have been receiving clear and itemized revenue share summaries from BBTV every single month, properly reflecting your contract with the company since the beginning of our partnership. They're like, yo, you trusted us for this long, dummy? on you obviously harassing and defaming they're trying to use big scary words and this works most of the time they go community guidelines oh they're gonna get me in trouble defame and harass uh yeah do something about it go ahead i'm right here you got my address you know everything about me let's go we are always available to work with creators to answer any questions <laughs> Took you three days to get back to me. Regretfully, you gave us no opportunity to have a meaningful conversation or to work constructively with you. Again, this is revision bullshit. Fuck you. You had a whole week to come together and make that decision to fuck me in the ass. You have maliciously attacked our company, our CEO and team, and potentially illegally recorded a conversation with our business representative. Okay, come get me. Come arrest me. And you've also crossed other important legal and contractual boundaries. It's like, say what they are. And you broke a whole bunch of other rules that I'm not going to write right now. Yeah, uh, you guys know what's disappointing? That you stole $620,000 from me. Due to the approach you've taken, we can confirm that you have clearly contravened YouTube community guidelines and breached your agreement with BBTV. And hence, we are releasing your channel and terminating our relationship with you as, as of Tuesday, April 11th. Oh, that's tomorrow. Why are they waiting? It's like, why just do it now? If you are interested in resolving the remainder of what appears to be a contractual dispute, I love that it's just a contractual dispute. They're like, the, the contract could say anything. And they'll be like, no, we're keeping your money because, uh... Hey, it's a, uh, I don't know, there's something in the contract that says we can. Take it up with the judge. It's just legal theft. If you're interested uh, in resolving this contractual dispute, please be advised that we will make our team available to discuss these concerns. If you continue to publicly harass our team and inform the creator, misinform the creator community about our company, we will hold you accountable. I want you to hold me accountable. We can assure you that BBTV is alive and well and supporting thousands of partners. We are proud of the work that we do with the creator community and have thousands of creators who appreciate and trust us. So this is when I, I, I got this letter late at night. I immediately went to the basement, cracked my knuckles, sat down for like an hour plus, And I said, all right, this is the one. This is the one. So here it is. So I said, dear whatever attorney, I must express my deepest gratitude for the fact that this is the second legal letter you've sent me at the witching hour of 10 p.m. on a weekend, no less. And during a holiday to boot, happy Easter, by the way, truly warms my heart to know that you're so devoted to our little dispute that you're willing to sacrifice your precious personal time. It paints a rather vivid picture of frantic desperation, as if you're scrambling to make amends for your company's own incompetence. If you intend to accuse me of violating U YouTube's community guidelines and defaming and harassing your CEO, I would kindly request that you be more specific. It's crucial that we maintain a fair and transparent dialogue during this time. Fair and transparent. Unlike your theft of $620,000 without notice or discussion. While I am truly heartbroken by the end of our relationship, I cannot help but wonder if your company will be able to survive without the steady flow of stolen fronts from our channel. It is, indeed, a trying time for you, especially considering that your stock has plummeted a staggering 96%, not to mention the re recent acquisition of 21.6 million Canadian dollars, desperately sought to pay off mounting debts. And my God, to accept that loan with 16% interest? How bad are your financials? A kid with a lemonade stand could secure better financing from the childhood than the neighborhood children. If you needed money, you only had to ask. I would have given it to you for 15%. By the way, 16% is horrible. That is crazy. In your letter, you accuse me of potentially illegally recording a conversation with your business representative and crossing other unspecified legal and contractual boundaries. However, as you are well aware, Canada is a one-party consent country. I'm sure the important legal and contractual boundaries I crossed are very scary. Too scary, apparently, to speak of, since you cannot even list them. Unlike you, I can be very specific about the legal and contractual boundaries you have crossed, stealing $620,000. The notion that I was somehow impatient and unwilling to wait for your decision is provably false. You were granted an entire week to carefully consider the matter after receiving my initial letter and ultimately chose, in unison, in unison with leadership, to retain my funds. This decision is clearly documented in the recorded call, which, fortunately, exists 
to counter your misrepresentation of the facts. Resolving this issue is quite straightforward on your point. Return the stolen 620000 Anything less will be for the court to decide. Lastly, I couldn't help but notice the closing paragraph of your letter, in which you profess your undying pride in your company. While I'm thrilled to see you so enamored with your organization, it did come across as slightly insecure. <laughs> P.S. As an aside, considering the current state of affairs at your company, it might be wise a wise decision to explore new employment opportunities. I'm sure your skills and expertise as a lawyer would be high, highly valued somewhere else. For example, FTX, Enron, or the Capone crime family. <laughs> your obedient servant, Ethan Klein. Your obedient servant. Definitely a Hamilton yes, reference. Yes, a Hamilton him. reference. And and well, I have a good night. and she she always <laughs> when she messages me she does an attachment. She always puts it in attachment, so I wanted to put something in an attachment for her. So I said, please see the attached image, and uh, here's what I attached. Um, it's a picture <laughs> of... <laughs> it says, fuck you and your whole organization. It's a picture of me, soy-eyed. And just a little something, because she should know a little bit about me. It's a minion meme. I'm a handful. I'm strong-willed, independent, a bit outspoken, and I tell it like it is. I make mistakes. <laughs> I am sometimes out of control, and at times I'm hard to handle, but I love, and I give with all my heart. So true. Oh, such a cancer. If you can't handle me at my worst, then you sure don't deserve me at my best. <laughs> <laughs> Signed, owner, fair use, and First Amendment advocate, Ethan Klein. Yeah, your proper title.